Films here, and welcome back to the Inuyasha Vlogs. We are on the final chapter of The Band of Seven with two episodes handy, that being the fall of Bonkotsu. This is the final battle that we've been building up throughout the entirety of the fifth season, and it all comes down to this. Despite some stuff in a couple more episodes down the line, this is basically sort of the highlight, the final conclusion of a huge part of this season. So, with that said, the majority of this two-part episode, to make it quick and in a summary, is that it's Bonkotsu's final battle. He has gathered all the sacred jewel shards uh, from his fallen comrades, either he took from them or betrayed them and whatnot, put them in his Bonryu, put them in his body, and him and Inuyasha are having their final confrontation in a pretty epic battle inside the mountain of Mount Hakure. And there's a lot to cover with this one, and it's really just the main highlight of this two-parter, is that you have not only this incredibly well-animated battle between these two throughout the span of two episodes, like, you could tell this is where the budget of this season went was to this confrontation, because they're fighting, the, there's sword fighting, there's fist fighting, there's power struggles, there's, there's words to be said, there's flashbacks, it's all pretty damn impressive, especially in this very kind of secluded environment inside this little cave in the mountain. You think, okay, well, with the amount of power they have, they would probably be, like, more, like, pushing and shoving. There'd be more space to shoot their attacks. But no, they're um, kind of limited to the space, which is pretty impressive. And even then, you have Inuyasha trying to strategize because despite Bonkotsu being human, he's not a demon, so some of his powers do not work, like the Backlash Wave, which would ultimately be the best way to take out Bonkotsu. So because Bonkotsu's human, he can't use that power. But aside from that, like, just on the sidelines, you have other characters in the fray. As the demons emerge from Mount Hakure, all of our characters kind of come together in sort of fighting off demons individually, despite the demons really paying no attention other than our hero is getting in the way. So you have moments where Shishomaru's cutting demons with Toki Jin. Even Jaka gets in there with the with the staff of two heads, which I always love when he's utilized uh, using his powers. You have Kikyo and Kagome using their archery techniques. You have Koga and his team uh, using their wolf powers. And they're trying to just take out all of these demons and monsters. And even like Moroku and Sango, they're still in the depths of Mount Hakure. And of course, they come across a pit that is where Naraku was hiding. We find out in this episode that Naraku has been spending the last two seasons rebuilding his body after the fall of season three. That's why he's no longer around. And that is a very clever move for the villain to make, to basically saying, yeah, you guys got me, you guys kicked my ass, I'm gonna rejuvenate myself, recharge, reform, and actually have a stronger outcome uh, when this is all over. So, there's still more to discuss after this two-parter um, in regards to Naraku's massive plan here. And with that being said, going back to Bonkotsu, um, we see the full flashbacks, and we get a pretty impressive one. It's not just, obviously, you know, him forming the band of, like, Seven and, you know, meeting Naraku and them coming up with a deal where Naraku resurrects him, but it's also a matter of, this takes place before Bonkotsu, uh, creates the band of Seven. It was only him and Jokotsu who were kind of these, these brotherly kind of friends who were kind of going around doing stuff, and Bonkotsu, in a, in a flashback, meets Naraku in sort of this murky swamp area, and it actually takes place after the fall of Kikyo, after Kikyo and Inuyasha uh, have their fallout and the jewel is destroyed or, you know, taken with Kikyo to the other world, and Naraku has been spending the last 50 years pretty much figuring out where did it go. And that's kind of fascinating because you have that little plot hole in between that 50-year time frame where, obviously, when Kikyo uh, took the jewel with her, uh, Naraku was kind of stuck because his plan got completely fucked. His idea was to have the two hate each other so that he could sneak in and get the jewel and leave these two for dead. But, unfortunately, Kikyo was smart enough to say, no, this jewel needs to be taken with me to hell. Nobody should have it. And now Naraku's kind of stuck in a search for it. It kind of reminds me of Jafar in Aladdin, which I actually just watched recently, where he's he thinks he's got the lamp, but then he's like, What is it? No. No!
It's so funny to think of it that way, and it kind of makes you think, man, Naraku, you got fucked over. You bit yourself in the ass, buddy. But whichever the case, uh, Bankotsu and Chakotsu go to form the Band of Seven, carry out their mercenary work in that in sort of that 50 year of time, get killed, and then later on, Naraku comes in and resurrects uh, Bankotsu, and in a surprising scene, uh, something you don't see much in the show, male nudity, I mean, not full frontal, but you still see a, a grown-ass man naked, which you're like, Hot damn, no wonder all the girls like him. Um, which is funny, because, like, the majority of the show, the nudity is more applied to the female demographic. But to the point, uh, Naraku resurrects Bonkotsu and tells him, Kill all my enemies, and you guys get a second chance at life. But with that being said, I mean, even Inuyasha knows with Bonkotsu being human, he's trying to actually talk with Bonkotsu during their fight. There are words to be had in this battle, and what's really crazy is that it seems like Inuyasha is trying to show some mercy with this guy, even when he's done terrible fucking deeds. He's killed, technically, 2,000 lives. He's taken 2,000 lives with his Bonryu, and... The whole time, you think, okay, well, maybe Bonkotsu can maybe realize, okay, Naraka was using me, maybe I should work with the good guys to redeem myself and my brothers? No, lol, fuck that, I just like killing people. There is no getting through to this guy, so it shows that evil does not only come from the likes of demons, it does come back to humans. Like, humans can be uh, intimately evil. And it goes back to what Kayede said in the second episode. There are humans whose hearts are more evil still, and only the jewel has the power to make real their petty, grasping ambitions. <gasps> it all kind of brings it back to the first episode, which I kind of like in this arc, which is pretty cool. Kind of a recap, because we haven't seen what's happened since the beginning for a good long while, and that's good to keep your audience engaged in some point. So this fight is honestly awesome. The animation is spectacular. The dubbing by both Matt Hill and Richard Ian Cox is really good dialogue here. And it all comes down to realizing that Inuyasha, while he may not be able to kill Bonkotsu with the Backlash Wave, he can take out his Bonryu. So when he decides to attack the Bonryu is when Bonkotsu eventually dies and falls uh, from grace. He falls sort of as a tragedy where, yeah, I was evil. I was a terrible mercenary. But at the end, he's like, shit. You know, I, I got screwed over by this guy, and Inuyasha gives a lesson, like, you were already stronger before the Sacred Jewels uh, took consumed you with Naraku. You had your own will to be stronger and to be better, but you let greed become your downfall. It's a really good message when it comes to this character. So, overall, you get to see why Bonkotsu has been this very popular character, even though he's only appeared in one season. He's got a great tragic backstory, he's got really good charismatic attitude, he's got a good form of brothers that, while he does kill and betray, he does respect, and his sword's pretty damn cool. I love the shit out of Bonryu. I really wish they kept it around for a little while, or it didn't get destroyed, but it's still a pretty cool sword that does rival the Tetsaiga in a way. But of course, that's not really the end to the story of this arc, because eventually what happens is the cave, now that the barrier has kind of evaporated, uh, the cave and the mountain starts to turn into something, and it turns out it's not a cave. It's literally what Han Solo says in Empire. This isn't no cave. It turns out we are inside Naraku building his body, so all of our heroes are inside the mountain, and they're getting absorbed into his body. Koga sinks, and Inuyasha is all, like, hentied up. Like, the, um, the whole thing with Naraku's body, it kind of reminds me of the Nightmare King from Little Nemo Adventures in Slumberland, which is actually a really good movie. It's actually a Hayao Miyazaki film, but in that, there's a lot of, like, gooey tentacle kind of things. It's really nightmarish, so in this, they kind of replicate that in the, in the visual storytelling and when it comes to Naraku's uh, body body forming, and the episode ends with all of our heroes uh, reunited inside, and Inuyasha is in the belly of the beast, and how can things get worse? Well, we're going to have to find out as we wrap up season five. We're kind of close to the end with a couple more episodes. So overall, I really like this two-parter. It bookends the final chapter with the Band of Seven. It brought that entire story to a close, and you understand overall why, because the anime was trying to catch up with Rumiko Takahashi's work, and they were getting ahead of the manga, so basically they had to either create the Band of Seven or Takahashi created the Band of Seven in the manga to pad out time so they could still make more episodes while she was continuing the story. The Band of Seven overall are great additions to the Inuyasha lore. I think they are fantastic villains. I wish in some regards they stuck around a little more, but overall I had a good time with these guys. They did have a huge lasting impact. There are several cosplayers that actually cosplay these guys, and they kind of were pretty cool for a fifth season villain, just to get us away from Naraku a little bit, because how many times are you going to do the whole Naraku gets away and then disappears and then 
comes back, and so on. Because Naraku has never been really engaged with the heroes, really since season one and two. He's really taken a huge hit, and now he's trying to find other means to get his goals done by essentially, you know, creating a small band of groups to take out his enemies, which you wonder why this guy wouldn't even come up with an army. I get his demons are like ones that are essentially an army, but I'm talking a full-fledged army, but we might see that down the line in a certain film. But this arc I really liked, it was a good way to close off Bonkatsu's story, and I can't wait to see where the outcome of the Mount Hakure saga ends, and we're gonna see that next time. So let me know your thoughts on the final battle with Bonkotsu's storyline in the comment section below, and I overall give this one a good 9 out of 10. This is definitely one of the highlights of the season. I really enjoyed myself with this huge final battle. But of course, if you like these vlogs and you want to support us, you can so on Patreon, just a dollar or more will get you access to all of our content, as well as other special features. All your will go towards our show and a potential Inuyasha fan film down the line, depending how this pandemic and the world goes. So until the next video, guys, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. This is Big Jack Film signing off, and I'll catch you guys next time as hopefully we wrap up the season. I have no idea where it's going to go at this point and how long it stretches out, but I will keep you guys informed. Until next time, take it easy.